Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today in the shop we have the High Mile Toyota Sienna 2000 model year V6. Right now it has over 545,000 miles on it. It's just here for a timing belt, uh, some maintenance work, and it's setting a check engine light. The code is P0330 Bank 2 Knock Sensor Circuit. So, uh, you know, I told the guy, sure, bring it over, we'll do everything at once, so the van will make it to a million miles, no problems. So these knock sensors, they live in the valley between, you know, under the lower intake manifold. So there's where bank one sensor screws in and bank two sensor screws in right there. So it's a little bit of work to uh, get those out. Let's do a bench test on the knock sensors to prove the bank two sensor is misbehaving. Um, let's see the scope setup. So first let's look at OEM service data for the P0330 trouble code. So circuit description, you got two knock sensors, one per bank. And this code sets when no knock sensor two signal to ECM with engine speed between 2000 and 5000 RPM. What are the possibilities? Open or short and knock sensor 2 circuit, the knock sensor 2 itself, or the ECM. Okay, there's a wiring diagram, just a single wire going to each sensor, and it's grounded through the body of the sensor to, you know, the cylinder head. So, here's the wiring diagram. This is really neat. Inspection using oscilloscope. How often do you see that in OEM service info? This is really awesome that we have some waveforms that we can try to reproduce on the bench. So here on the card saying run the engine to 4000 RPM and then zoom in and the frequency of the knock sensor signal should be 7.1 kilohertz. Very specific. Okay, so using this, let's set up the Pico scope. So I got four channels. I bought two replacement sensors. NTK, uh, where are they made? Made in Mexico, okay. So here they are. So this sensor is from bank one, that was not setting a code. This sensor is from bank two, that's the one that was setting a code, and you can see it's different. Someone already had this intake manifold off and replaced this sensor. And it looks like it's not the same as bank one. It's aftermarket, it's junk suspected junk, but we're going to prove that. And here I have the, to the two new, brand new sensors from NTK. So four channels are, let's see here, channel one is on the bank one sensor, that's suspected good still. Channel two, the red, is on bank two sensor, we suspect that one's bad, and then channels three and four are on the brand new sensors. So how do we set up the scope for this? So let's just do you know, 20 volts, 20 volt screen per channel, and half a screen or half a second per division, so 500 milliseconds per division. So they're ready to go. As soon as the sensor feels a vibration, it'll send a signal. The little piezo crystal will actually produce a voltage. So I'm going to knock the vise with a hammer right here. And then we'll see what if we get a signal on the scope. Here we go. Just one knock. So definitely something. Let's zoom in. What do we see? We see that the red is much lower amplitude than the blue or the green or the yellow. The blue one, that's the OEM sensor, that one looks actually the, the best amplitude. We can scale it down a little bit. You see it went off the screen. Now it depends on kind of where you hit. As I hit the vise right next to the bank one sensor obviously so that felt it more. But regardless, we can see that this Bank 2 aftermarket sensor is garbage. It's the amplitude is much much smaller than 
the other sensors. So uh, what's the frequency? So on the Pico, very convenient, just drag your cursor, peak to peak, and right here you'll see the actual frequency. So, you know, let's go from the green, green to green right there. 7.5 kilohertz, that's very close. I mean, at this scale, wherever you put the cursor, this is going to make a pretty big difference in the frequency. 7.2 kilohertz, that's exactly what the uh, specs said. So, three of these sensors are good. The one that the car was fussing about is obviously not good. And that's it. That's a quick test, bench test of a NOx sensor. I think it's pretty neat. You know, on the scope you can see, yes, this is going to fix the car. It's not a wiring problem. It's not a computer problem. This sensor, someone replaced it with a junk aftermarket part, and it failed prematurely. So we're going to pop these in, and then do all the other work. But just a quick video on how to bench test NOx sensors. Remember, test, don't guess. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. A little bonus footage of the timing belt job. There is so much rubber fluff, like shaved material on this timing cover. It's pretty ridiculous. It, I mean, it's a mess down there. You got an oil leak. The belt is... I expect it to be a little tighter. I mean, I can almost pull it off the pulley here. And there's this belt material just everywhere. So, I guess we'll find out what is causing the rubbing. Something is not right. Good thing we are doing this procedure. I mean, the entire front of the engine is covered in this oil goop residue. Potentially, the cam seals are leaking a little bit. It's hard to say. Or the valve cover gaskets, or everything. <laughs> but we'll uh, keep turning it down. See what we find. So I do believe the big oil leak is coming from the cam seals because both sides of the engine are very messy. There's shredded belt material all over this thing, but <laughs> and it mixes with the oil. To create this nice soft paste. That is crazy. I mean, it basically filled the entire bottom cover of the timing belt. So I think I found the mystery of the belt shred material. So this little washer, spacer, belt retainer was on like this. Okay? If you notice, it's not quite symmetrical. There is a concave side and a convex side. Now, which side do you think the bell le belt likes better? The one that is <laughs> angled towards it or the one that's angled away from it? This sucker was installed backwards and it was basically the sharp edge was just shaving this edge of the belt away. It should have been installed like this the belt would be happy. Insane. That blows my mind. You see the shiny perimeter? That's where it was rubbing on the belt. So that was going on for 100,000 miles. That explains all this debris. And then the oil leaks are obviously from the cam seals. So pretty nuts. We're finding a lot of you know, opening up an old can of worms here, finding a lot of mistakes. This aftermarket knock sensor, and someone installed a replacement cooling hose made out of wood. This hose right here, this SAE 30 RX KX, made in the USA, it's a Gates hose. 
This is made for oil, not coolant. So when coolant is flowing through it and it got hot, it's brittle. I mean, here, here's a piece that snapped off when I was taking off the throttle body. Boom, just completely rock hard. So obviously we'll fix all these things, putting it back together. Um, but yeah, old cars can definitely <laughs> have some surprises uh, stored. So, Sienna is back on the road after the timing belt job. It runs as good as it ever has at over half a million miles. Smooth as butter. I mean, original everything. Original starter, original alternator, original AC compressor. The guy, the owner, said that he has never had to recharge the AC and it still blows ice cold. I mean, that is phenomenal. So I vote this the most bulletproof vehicle ever made, at least that I've worked on. <laughs> um, yeah, so keep the old Toyotas on the road. Scotty Kilmer would be proud. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.